Hello there, beautiful people, friends and family. A very warm welcome to you all. I hope you're well and doing fantastic. Today we're going to make homemade chicken stock or chicken broth. How refreshing, how satisfying is it to know exactly what ingredients went into its preparation because you did it yourself. And the bonus here, friends, is you can pretty much use this broth for anything you can think of your rice dishes, from your pilafs, your jollof rice, your pilaus, your biryanis, your fried rice dishes. You can also use them as part of your soups to get the broth in there. It's also to thin up your sauces. You can use it in your stews. You can even make gravy out of it. It's just so versatile. It's great to have this in your fridge or freezer. I am very happy to share this recipe with you today. Actually, really excited. Let's begin by washing our hands. So friends, I have some chicken leg quarters. I bought a while ago, clean them and store them in the freezer. Just took them out. They're still frozen, but that's okay. Now, because it's chicken leg quarters, there is about 10 to 15% bone and the rest is meat. So this is more on the broth side of things than more stock. You get stock out of bones and the broth come out of the meat, all right? So it's a combination of both. Now I have six and a half pounds of chicken leg quarters and I've added one large onion with the skin on, obviously washed thoroughly first. Added three large carrots to it and now I'm going to add this bob of garlic. And to make way for maximum extraction of these flavor boosting vegetables, you want to cut them open. Leave them whole, but at least cut them open so that you're able to extract as much as possible in terms of the flavor. I've also added one ginger. It is about three thumb sizes. I've added some celery. Everything used here is listed in the description box below in detail. So please check that out. And here I have some leeks which resemble spring onions or green onions in flavor. And they're just slightly more dense. And it's important to cut the bottom off so that you are able to separate the layers. See all that dirt in there? You want to clean it. The easiest way to clean leeks is to cut them into thin rings. Separate the rings in a bowl of water and add a little bit, a sprinkle of flour to it and you will see all the dirt just descend to the bottom of that um, bowl of water. Now in this case, I'm trying to leave my ingredients in their whole form so that way I'm able to remove them easily when everything is done and come together. All right, so I tie it up with a butcher's twine and then in the pot it goes. Now I have some parsley, this is the curled leaf. The flat leaf will work well too, but if you do end up using the flat leaf, you wanna use less because that's stronger. This one is a lot milder. Now I had some um, fennel left over from my previous chicken uh, recipe and I just froze it. Now I've removed it and added that too. That licorice flavor it imparts will be great in this broth. Now I also have my trio in terms of the herbs i have my rosemary sage and thyme these will work so great with your chicken broth or stock that goes in there as well now i have some spices so i put them all in a cheesecloth beginning with the fennel seeds some more licorice flavor works beautifully with meats especially chicken and i have a combination of white black and red peppercorns all that goes in there as well you want that kick of spice in there it just really brings everything together it's also a great way to boost flavors in your stocks and broths now because this is homemade friends and family you get to also control how much sodium you actually add and so i have some sea salt I'm adding just a little bit and I'll be mindful of the fact that there is already some salt in here. So when I incorporate the stock or broth in my dishes, I know exactly what to do. Now the pot I'm using is a 21 quart stock pot. So I'm adding just enough water to get it to cover all the ingredients in there. It is a huge pot. So keep that in mind as well. You will need a big pot for this. Otherwise you'll have to make some adjustments to the amount of ingredients you end up using. I've placed it on medium heat with the lid on and brought it to a boil. 
And once it comes to a boil, you want to remove the lid and try to resubmerge all the ingredients that are trying to float, if at all possible. You can tell I'm having a little bit of a hard time trying to do that because they have kind of soaked in some of that moisture. They will release it eventually, but we're going to cook this down until it is very concentrated and rich. We have our mirepoix in there, which is a combination of your onions, your carrots, and also your celery. Those are must-have ingredients in terms of vegetables that boost flavor in a stock or broth like this. You must have those in there. And then add your favorite herbs and your vegetables, all right? So don't limit yourself. If you wanna add more, you can. If you wanna make adjustments, if you wanna omit some of the ingredients, I use and replace them with your favorites totally go for it what we're making here is a light chicken broth more on the broth side of things I will bring you a recipe where I share with you how I make my stock using all bones so stay tuned for that as well see how the color has changed it has been cooking on medium heat with the lid off and has now concentrated and reduced it cooked for two solid hours and here it is done I'm removing the meat separating that because I will use the meat I will take the skin off and obviously the bones as well shred it and make something for the children with it now these vegetables here I'm going to put into the food process Processor and turn them into a puree which will in turn be used as an organic thickener for my dishes in the future now your broth should be free of bigger chunks of vegetables and meat so now you can pass the rest through a strainer to catch the rest of the edible debris edible because I will be adding it to my puree to thicken my dishes in the future now here is the broth that is a very good color on a light chicken broth now beautiful people thank you so much for watching to this point but keep on watching because yeah, i think you want to stay to watch and see what i did with some of this broth you will hopefully find it inspiring so everything is strained there is quite a bit of fat on this chicken broth so we're going to place the broth in the fridge for just a couple of hours or until the fat on it solidifies we'll separate that and we'll have pure organic very tasty chicken broth and i'll also show you how i store it So here it is after a couple of hours. Easy to remove that fat, which we don't need. So I actually discarded this. However, if you want to keep it and use it to cook something later, you absolutely can because it is flavorful. Now you know you have yourself a good broth when it is jiggly after it has been refrigerated. And this is jiggly, you'll see. So I have these 16 ounce containers, the plastic, because this is now cooled down, it is safe to store them in. They are great for freezing, for refrigerating your leftovers and things like this, such as broths, all right? So see how it has congealed and become jiggly this is perfection these lids are airtight so you do not ever have to worry about spillage and also the flavors will be contained and there will be no uh, exchange of flavors while it stores in the freezer or fridge now i took one of them and heated it up in a pan on the stove and now i'm just going to use it as a broth for my vegetables and also some Sicilian um, bass that I pan seared on the skin side so it became nice and crispy with just three prawns. I use a little salt to taste with crushed black pepper and some smoked paprika and there it is. I have some um, purple cabbage and some scallions. I also have some chilies and some sliced onions and here is that broth. I didn't need to add any more seasoning to it because we did add salt to our broth and I did season my protein in there and this was so 
good. It went down so well. It was quite satisfying. I really enjoyed it. So this is just another way of using this broth besides using it to cook as your base for your soups and stews or your rice dishes. You can use it like this as well. Just heat it up and there you have it. I thank you all so much for watching. beautiful people friends and family a warm welcome to you all thanks so much for joining us today here in Anabas kitchen I hope you are well and having a fantastic day today we're making beef stock using all bones because that's where stock comes from so you know because it's beef bones it's going to be super rich and concentrated it's going to be nice and dark I can't wait to begin, but let's wash our hands first. So a quick run through our ingredients. With the main ingredient being the beef bones I picked up from the butcher shop, inexpensive, cleaned already with salt and vinegar as well as some water. And the rest of our ingredients are... I have some fresh produce. I encourage you to use the kind you like, but you have to have your onions, your celery, and your carrots. This is Maripaw. And these three vegetables in combination do form the base for creating most broths and stock. So they are must-haves. Of course, I've added one bulb of garlic and when I've cut it open, I'm also slicing my ginger now and added it. I'm going to also add these scallions or green onions, also known as spring onions. I love the mild, sweet, oniony flavor they bring into the stock. Of course, I'm also adding this Anaheim pepper. You can use green bell pepper in place of that. The Anaheim pepper, if you have access to it, it does give you both the peppery and chili flavor which i absolutely love i just also added one red bell pepper which is going to bring us the sweetness going to enhance the sweetness of the stock and a sprig of rosemary as well as five small bay leaves have joined the ingredients now here is my black peppercorns two star anise and that's an optional ingredient because it has a licorice flavor to it and so does the aniseed I just added. So you can just use your aniseed or your fennel <coughs> seeds. I've just now also added some coriander seeds. And each one of these spices will play that very important role of condensing the flavor of the beef bones, all right? So tie them together in a cheesecloth with your butcher's twine and just place it right on in there. Now we're going to add our beef bones, which like I said earlier on have been cleaned, but we're going to remove the marrow from here. The marrow is literally fat, lot of fat. So I remove most of that. And I do remove most of the marrow, not all because the marrow carries loads of flavor as well. So now I am planting them strategically on top of the fresh produce. And they are now going to get one more thing added, or a couple more. I'm going to add these components which will help them caramelize sooner. So I'm drizzling some virgin olive oil onto them. And then I'm also going to sprinkle some salt and crushed black pepper. I do think it is of utmost importance to ensure that each beef bone is generously seasoned with salt and crushed black pepper. The oil that I drizzled onto each of the bones just ensures that the salt and crushed black pepper adhere to the bones and not rather slide right off. Next step, I add a cup of water. This is going to help to kickstart the formation of the stock. It will also help to create some steam to prevent the dry produce from drying out. Now we have all our ingredients in the roasting pan. So we're going to set it in the oven and bake it for 30 minutes. 
What we're actually doing is roasting the ingredients, which is going to cause caramelization. And caramelization will intensify, amplify, and deepen all of the flavors in there. It's going to bring us that oomph we're looking for. Yes, so the oven is already preheated on broil and you see I place the roasting pan on the very top rack so it has direct and immediate contact with the heat that's coming from the top of the oven. 30 minutes afterwards, here's what we have. Our ingredients are done roasting and friends let me tell you, you can smell the aroma is definitely quadrupled. It is absolutely perfect at this point. You can also see some stock already forming and it's already darkening because of the caramelization. Yes, y'all, caramelization of any kind of ingredient is the good way, a good technique to really maximize the flavors, all right? And that's what we want in this simple stock. Now I'm going to add some more water so we can get as much broth from this deepened roasting pan of ingredients before it goes back into the oven. Make sure that everything is completely submerged, especially the bones. And some of the vegetables will try to float, so just push them right back in there. Now I've placed my parchment paper on because this roasting pan does not have a lid and the parchment paper is going to create more like a barrier between the edible food and the foil, all right? The foil is going to trap in a lot of the steam, but I've also vented it, all right, on both sides. That right there is a vent. So we're not creating too much steam in there. We just want enough steam, all right? So now it goes into the oven. This time round is at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and it stays in there for two and a half hours. So this is something you can do on a day that you don't really have much time, just throw it into the oven or your pressure cooker. You can also cook it in your instant pot or your slow cooker. And you can even transfer all your ingredients into a pot, place the lid on it and cook it on your stove top for two to three hours. Now take a good look. I think we got the best tasting stock we can ever get from these beef bones. They look beautiful in there. They're swimming in that joyous stock. Wow, how wonderful is that? The little meat we had on the bones are literally falling off and that's what you want to see so now we're going to remove all the bones separate that from the stock then we'll also separate the vegetables as well and keep on watching friends we will see what we will do with the vegetables the beef bones what i did was i removed all of those little pieces of meat from there and i made tacos <laughs> i made tacos for the kiddos and they loved it tacos and kiddos wow those rhyme <laughs> i didn't mean to rhyme like that <laughs> tacos and kiddos they loved the tacos yes they were tasty and they were very savory so that was beautiful yes so now all the vegetables do get separated and I do place them in a colander or a strainer and see how much stock came out of that so take the stock and place it right where it belongs all right beautiful looking stock Wow very rich color that's exactly what we want. So now I pour the whole stock into the strainer to remove the little pieces of debris. Gorgeous, just absolutely stunning. Uh, now the stock is free of all of these little debris. We're going to put this stock into the refrigerator and we just kind of wait until the fat on it solidifies so we can remove that, you know, the whole shebang. You understand how that works. So what we are doing now with these vegetables is we're going to process them into a paste and this will now serve as a thickener 
for when I make my stews or soups or whatever I could use a beautiful organic tasting thickener for, all right? So there it is, and I store these in a Ziploc bag. They have cooled all the way down, so it's it's all right, it's great. And so they go into a Ziploc bag, and of course, I label them, because it will end up looking like most of the things I have in my freezer, all right? So there it is. Imagine this as part of your stew, how much volume you're going to be able to get from it, as well as some really good taste. Yes, indeed, so don't waste anything. Perfection. Yes, one of my favorite words in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, so we are almost nearing the end of this production. I am happy once again, having lots of fun. So next step, y'all, is the stock goes into the fridge. Fat will solidify. We'll remove all of the fat and portion the stock into airtight, spill-proof containers and store them in the freezer and use them when we need them. Done. How simple, how quick, how easy is this and how practical most importantly yes how practical is it to have your own homemade beef stock somewhere in your freezer and use it when needed just practical not only practical but you know exactly what ingredients went into its preparation which gives you that peace of mind now look at this stock and tell me it isn't rich it is tasty, it is slightly seasoned, so it is very low in sodium as well. The store-bought versions can have lots of sodium in them, and they can taste artificial. I have used them before. Yes, yeah, so portioned and done. Friends, if you did enjoy yourself, please make sure you leave me a thumbs up. It helps to promote the videos. And you see a lot of work and love goes into bringing you these videos. So kindly leave me a thumbs up. I have labeled them with the letter B because I already have some chicken stock in there that I forgot to label. So there in the freezer they go. Thank you so much for joining us today, friends and family. Make sure that you make it a great day and have fun fun, especially in that kitchen. Greetings, beautiful people, friends and family. Welcome. Welcome to Nanabas Kitchen, y'all. I hope you are well and absolutely having a fantastic day. We have on the menu today a hearty vegetable broth to pack a punch of flavor into your savory dishes. If you are vegan or vegetarian, this is a love letter to you. You will definitely, absolutely, hands down, love this broth. And to my meat lovers, my pescatarians, this will work for you as well. So I am preparing my mirepoix, a culinary term for three key ingredients one must have in any broth. Your onion, your carrots, and also your celery. And all three of those ingredients have joined a bundle of parsley in the roasting pan and I've just also cut open one bulb of garlic and added it. Now here is some fennel. I'm going to add the root as well as the fronts, which have a lot of flavor in them. That will give us that licorice flavor we want here. And that licorice flavor is an amplifier and unifies all the other flavors in there and makes it all the more special. I've added some spring onions and I'm working now on my red bell pepper, which will bring us that sweetness we absolutely want in here and also improve the color. Now I'm adding some Anaheim peppers as well. This recipe is tried and it's true. You will totally agree when you try it. Now I have some leeks. You just cannot have enough onion essence in your vegetable broth. I cut them into large rings and I'm going to clean them out because leeks are a root plant and they have dirt in them. You have to clean them out. And this is an excellent way of cleaning them out. So after cutting them into rings, put them in some water and separate the rings just like so. And then when done with that, add a little bit of flour just about a tablespoon. 
the flower has density and so it carries or pushes down the dirt right into the bottom of that bowl. Once you're done with that, rinse them out one more time with clean water and voila, your leaves are squeaky clean. Next step, we're going to season with some salt. Yes, your fresh produce are all prepped. That's it, y'all. So season with some salt and add some crushed black pepper to umph the flavors here. And the salt plays that important role of bringing the natural sugars in your vegetables to the forefront. And the roasting is essential. You must have it in here. It's indispensable, all right, because the ingredients become sweetened, and that is a flavor you will need in your vegetable broth. Now, I've drizzled on some olive oil that will also help with the roasting evenly throughout. All right, so give it a stir with your hands. Just coat everything evenly, and into the oven it goes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to roast these until they are perfectly evenly roasted. I did take them out and I gave them a stir because we have quite a few layers of fresh produce in here. So I threw it back into the oven after 10 minutes of roasting. Roasted it for another 10 minutes. And we'll continue repeating this procedure until all the vegetables in there have received a fair amount of caramelization. And then we are done with the roasting. And the roasting took about 40 minutes for me. Again, what you're looking for is caramelization throughout. And a little bit of char is absolutely welcome because that is equal to more flavor, y'all. Yes, smokiness, yeah, you need that in there. So now you're going to transfer everything into a stock pot. Now take a look at this sneak peek of what to expect next. The broth that has already formed is flavor loaded and you can see it. Now I've added some bay leaves. I have a 12 quart stock pot. Wow, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> All right, and I'm adding some white peppercorns. And you may substitute those with any kind of peppercorns you have. Black, red, green, whichever kind will work. Now I'm filling the pot up with hot water from the tap just so that I don't shock the temperature that's already in the vegetables, which will take you back to square one where we don't wanna be. And I'm going to set it on medium heat. I'm not going to cover this pot at all. It will come to a boil, and as soon as it comes to a boil, I will turn the heat down to the lowest heat setting, and then continue with a gentle simmering until the contents are reduced to about one third the way down the pot. And that is what you need to do to concentrate these flavors in here. Take a look at the broth that is forming. It is now sweetened and you'll have a little bit of a background smokiness. Just look at that color. Who ever thought that vegetables could be this rich? Yes, please give this recipe a shot. You will not regret it. And you know what's great about this recipe is you can tweak it any how you want. You can add cabbage, for instance, which gives it a really special flavor. I just didn't have any um, today, but I've made it with cabbage before as well. And it was, oh, it was so good. Cabbage is delicious, y'all. So try that too. You'll love it. Now I'm just draining the broth out of the produce. After everything is cooled down, and yes, the vegetables don't get thrown away. I'm going to blend them up and I'm going to use it also when I make some stews or soups. It is a great way to thicken your stews and soups and it also brings volume. Now look at the color of that broth again. Absolutely to live for. I am so in love with this recipe and I hope you all, whether you are vegetarian, vegan, or a meat lover, or a pescatarian, I know you'll find this broth quite useful and practical. I portioned them out. They are now cooled down into these 16 
ounce spill proof and airtight containers and into the freezer they go for storage you can also store it in your fridge if you're going to use it sooner all right now you can also portion them into ice cube containers if you want smaller portions as well now these here i'm going to blend them up right now and those will also go into the freezer i'll portion them out into ziploc bags and they will be very useful when i make my next stew or soup Perfect, nothing went to waste. And this in itself is very flavorful. Hey friends, thank you so much for joining us today here in the Nabis Kitchen. I hope you found some inspiration and learned a thing or two. I appreciate you always and I hope that you're making it a great year and having fun, especially in that kitchen. See you pretty soon on my next one. Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below and don't forget to share the video as well Also watch more videos It is chop time and here in Anabas kitchen chop time is always yes friends So pull up a chair. We are all friends and family here